You're listening to The Bonnery Show. It's 8 in the evening. Tune in every night at 8 to listen to The Bonnery Show on Irish News Radio or ITV.ie. And you can contact anything that you've heard or if anything you'd like to discuss at news at irishnews.net. Hi, you're listening to The Bonnery Show on ITV.ie and Irish News Radio. Today... We are talking to Eileen again, and we're going to have a quick chat with Eileen today. We're going to have a proper discussion tomorrow, but a quick coffee chat on a Saturday to find out what she, what's been going on, what she's been up to, and a few things about Leo, which is really kind of surprising. What I found really, what I wanted to ask you about, I don't know whether you saw Leo's vows to curb social media hate speech after the Iraq common eviction. Absolutely. Oh, right. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, God. Yeah, well, there you have it. They're really raging that, um, you know, they were caught. Uh, the, Jim O'Doherty went down there, by the way, during the week to Common, and she met the local reporter um, who filmed them evicting the family and Back yeah, apparently he's going to be in trouble or, or is in trouble, I don't know. Well, why is he in trouble? He was filming the incident as it was happening. Yeah. And then he was uh, collected by the guards and the guards wanted his phone. They wanted to seize his phone. And luckily he went in with the solicitor and the solicitor said, no, you're not entitled to his phone, that's his private you know, phone. And um, so they're going to fight it. And uh, the guard, he can't just seize his phone, you know, because he wasn't doing anything absolutely Legal. insane and I was listening to actually there was a Northern Irish guy who I rang was talking to him now and he talks for the Northern Irish and he was like saying absolutely disgraceful that the Irish government would try and put a division like that to try and get us to you know start killing each other again he was like it's absolutely they do not represent the loyalists we do not represent anything from this and yet we're getting the blame when the real criminals, the Irish government and the bankers who planted this to distract what they're doing to try and get the Irish um, anti-Northern Ireland and he said look I'll go down to a Roscommon myself and chain myself to to their house but they won't get affected he says and all of us who are Ulster should be actually going down to support it because this is not in our name, this is absolutely a disgrace the thing is that that's Roscommon, the, I think it's called the Democrat or one of those, maybe it's, that, it's the Roscommon, there's a little paper anyway that he works for, that he started. Yes. And so they're independent and they're not under the, the wing of Dennis O'Brien and co, yes. or Murdoch and co. So they're only, they're depending on advertising and everything. So they're self-funded as such, so they're independent and they're free. Yeah. Oh, wow. They don't have to follow the, the rules because if you yeah. are under the wing of of the globalists, you have to follow their orders. Yeah. And this is what they don't like, that there's a few rogue papers around the country that they haven't got. It's because they bought up a few. They, got, they bought up quite a few um, radio stations to Murdoch and co. Um, over the last couple of years, you know. And there's three of those newspapers. Uh, one of them... In, uh, there's a, somebody in Northern Ireland who owns them, who's an ex, you know, ex soldier. I think I heard of him actually. Yeah, I heard him. But the people he... in the town don't know it's owned by him. You know, yeah. if they knew, they wouldn't buy it. The three papers he owns. Anyway, the the one that they want, the, the the common one, uh, they wanted his phone, but um, they're not. They're no. There's no entitlement to it. So. Unbelievable, but even the Northern Irish were even shocked and disgusted at the low life of actually having to try, and instead of the real criminals, which was the government and the, the bankers, sh- trying to put a division to try and stir up shit again. Absolutely shocking behaviour. And then. Well, 500,000 views. That's why. They're very unhappy about that. And it became, um, it, you know, it was on international news as well. After it got outside Ireland that the Irish people were fighting back. 
yeah. fighting the globalists, fighting the bankers. The Yellow Vests movement is continuing. It's on today, two o'clock. Yeah, but I'm not really um, sure. I think we should have our own movement. I know that. I think we should have a green vest because I think that's been hijacked an awful lot by the the leftists, like people before profit, and who's a complete leftist agenda. So they're trying to rob it in Ireland, where in other countries it's been a completely hasn't been robbed. It's against all the logos, it's against the U.S. Yeah. thing. Or in Ireland, it's been robbed by, um, they keep jumping in, the left uh, people before profit, which are disgusting, another globalist. Um, well, it's really become clear to me in the last few months, I mean, it was clear about a year ago, maybe even two years, but now in the last six months or so, it has become so clear to me now and I hope to other people that oh, are yeah, exactly. literally... Even if you hadn't got a clue, I remember talking to you, Eileen, about a year ago, and you were very, very awake. Probably, you know, a step ahead, even for me, and maybe I was talking to you two years ago, and even then, two years ago, I think I had a first discussion with you. Um, and at that stage, you were still, you were awake. I had just started to wake up. And uh, no, I'd woken up from different ways. You'd woken up through banks and stuff. I'd woken up through through the threat of Islam. And I but even now, woke up. even now, I'm still waking up. Like this week, for example, I discovered that the globalists are funding Irish classes. Irish which? Irish classes for some of the politicians or people from... Uh, to make, you see, to, make, to fool people, to fool the Irish people into their loyalty... You know, to make them believe what their Irish speakers and their soil, and they must be. But no, some of them are disguised. We're dealing with like serious treachery here. You know, they they mightn't be at all for the Irish people. They should. They might speak Irish, but with the globalist agenda behind it. You know. Yeah. No, I was. I had funded by globalists. I'm. I mean, even from America, it's crazy. So some of them are learning Irish. But they're literally. Fool the Irish people by their loyalties. That's how deep it goes. I mean, I, I literally do believe now that Ireland is, has been taken over. Oh, it has. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, it's my mind. The bailout. Yeah, no, it's no, but by subversion and quietly and discreetly, you know. And this map, remember I told you about that map that I found about Britain and Ireland and Scotland was independent and Catalan was just independent and it was, there was a United States of Europe as such a federation, but Ireland was united, but it was called Ireland, not Republic of Ireland. And it wasn't the UK, it was Britain and Ireland. And I believe this is what they're working towards. No, but we're, we're just completely walking in the, I mean, we're completely asleep. Yes. Oh, God, gotcha. yeah. I'd even say today, majority of people are asleep. But I do think a lot of people are waking up like things like that, Ross Common. I think abortion woke up a huge amount oh, of people. Pretty bad, yeah. And, and well, I people, do think a lot of people who would have never woke up, woke up abortion. Are working night and day to pass this thing. But, I mean, they're completely, Leo and him are completely going to profit from abortion. I have to look at it. And you see, the they're going to thing financially, is they're going to financially benefit from this abortion. Oh, absolutely. But you see, decent people believed it was all, you remember before the vote, like it'll only be 12 weeks and it won't be late for an abortion, it won't be this, it won't be that, there'll be no, you know, we'll have a very moderate type of abortion, la la la. And people still believe that. I was talking to a guy yesterday who was showing me articles before the vote and I said, yeah, they're not the bill. That's not what got through. That's what the media said before the vote that will happen, that's what you were promised. That's completely different from what's actually happening. There will be abortion up to nine months. And very sketchy circumstances and what... Well, I mean, they're trying to call the baby or the, you know, fetus a product. A product! Yeah. And, you know, no um, pain relief or anything. No. I think a lot of people who voted for rights, equality... They didn't really vote for that. They remo they voted to remove the aid, but they didn't vote for what's what's now. And see, that's what people have to realise. Every time we have a referendum, and the reason they're having so many is after we vote yes or no to something, it gives them complete control over the legislation, and it's out of our hands at that point. So you never know what you're going to end up with. 
Absolutely. And I do think a lot of people were innocent and naive and they do unfortunately put their trust into a government that is so such a criminal. It's a criminal organisation. They are sub- they are definitely and it's so clear to me now that they, they are subversive. They're actually trying to undo the nation state of Ireland. That's that's for sure. And today Today, Charlie Flanagan, I mean, I don't buy any newspapers anymore, and I try to stay away from Boy, them. I, try, I look at it to keep up with the lies, but um, he has announced 80 of 530 refugees um, have been accepted to the family reunification extension. So it will be, um, they're Syrian mostly, and they will be coming, their families reunited. Um, Syrian but men. the point is, we, we didn't have it. There's no consultation with the Irish people uh, about this. We weren't asked about it because they keep extending the family reunification to include they want us every dead, single. They're bringing those people in to kill us. Do you every see generation. Those two girls murdered. One was Danish. And was horrendous. Absolutely, and they put it on YouTube. They chopping the, the girl's head off and spitting. I couldn't off. look. Yeah, I couldn't look. And a lot but of these people are the ones that, that they're they bringing in here. And that is why they're bringing them in. With that pure hate and disgusting views on women, that is what they're bringing in. And that is well, what is going to happen. Well, also Christian. The fact that they were Christian, you see, is brainwashed into them that they can do what they like. Do you question? Yeah. It's a, it, it, I mean, it's in their beliefs, the Koran. You know, it's, it's anti-Christian. Oh, you know, it's completely anti-Christian. And so you can lie to them. They hate them. Well, sure, Hitler loved Islam. He said the only religion he liked was Islam. And he actually had a few imams and sheikhs working with him through the... And that is why the pure hatred towards the the Jews. Hitler was involved... Well, that's another long story about funding and funded the wars and all the rest because there's implications. He could be implicated in some things too, but... Um, I truly, literally, I truly believe, yeah, now that we're, I mean, I think people should enjoy Christmas because I just really just don't have a good feeling about 2019. Neither do I. I and, think um, this has been signed and I do think they're just holding each other up, you know, for a thing again until the next one is signed. I think we're gone already. And I think... Well, I don't believe people are going to just... They're trying to block... You know, the, the people in Sinn Féin now are trying to block people going into the meetings, you know, like Gran Torino, um, Emma O'Doherty, any of the people going into the... You know, they have to block, block, block them. Are they? Trying to block the door. Trying to block the door because they're going in with cameras, you see, towards the meeting. Brainwash. They don't okay. realise they're being used as little pawns in a much bigger game. They believe they're fighting for justice or... Either they're subversive or they believe what they're doing. I think some of those women are calling them neo fascists. They're not neo fascists. They're just going to see when the when the town is being planted with fake migrants from Pakistan. That's the truth of it. No matter what people, most of them are migrants, economic migrants. Um, they're going in to record the meeting, and that what has not pleased uh, Mark Malone and all these. These are subversive people, Mark Malone and Co. You see, there's a lot of them who are clever, like Mark Malone and um, Shane Curry. They're, they have they're, connections to Soros. Yeah, they know what they're doing, but they have the little fools who actually haven't got a clue, um, and they're paying them money. No, but the, the, the government, the Department of Justice is actually subversive, and they're sending out groups to block the doors so people can't tell them what's going on, and it's your tax money. You know, it's your tax money that is funding all of this. I and mean, they don't want it filmed, and they don't want it getting out on YouTube, and they don't want people waking up, and they're lying on the MS. Complete lies. They're entertaining people. And we will be gone in such a short time. There is going to be a mass genocide here. I honestly do believe that. Is well, I saw, you saw which? drawings of, of the UN um, out in Dublin. I mean, they, the money trail you have to follow, it just, it just gets worse. It gets worse as you go down into the depth of it, you know? Yeah, no, I, I do. I, I think they want to depopulate Ireland completely because I, it was the only really country in Europe. Well, there was quite a lot, but but this was quite a pure. Like there was mainly just well, it's, it's Norway and Denmark and it is the pure like 
your life. It's Christian. This is what we have to realise, that we are the target. We are not the ones. When people have been shouted in, the, in their face, you're, you're a racist, you're a racist. I mean, we are actually the target. They're the racists. Mm, it's absolutely. the white Christians that are the, t- the joke is on us. not even it's each individual like each individual country like you know attacking the Irish Celtic because we have pretty much like something like over 80% of the Irish population was homogeneity and most of say all before that you know you would have had the Dutch the Danish all that would have been very up to recently not mixed at all so they won't, don't want that. And Ireland was very... Well, yeah, but this is what it is, people. But, I, you know, brainwash. Some of the millennials, it's bad, you know. I'm, oh, I talk to them, they're them. going, oh, the Irish went abroad. The Irish were never tax-funded migrants. They were slave uh, labor. It was slave labor when they were admitted to the U.S. And they funded themselves. And when I went abroad and when other people go abroad, they self-funding. And they have a visa and it expires. I'd say the EU... Irish people have to apply for a visa, a work permit. Yeah. And in Australia, if you don't leave, you'll be, you know, you'll be jailed. Yeah, you'll be criminalised. And you have to go over as well with the skill they want. You can't just jump on a plane and get a job. You have to, as you said, apply for a visa. You have to not have a criminal record of any sort. You've had to obviously not, you know, where there have anybody coming in, rapists, murderers, people who committed mass murders, you can have anybody coming into this country. Where in that, that time, if you went to America, they would go through all your family, go through all your things that you didn't have a criminal record. And then you they were slaves. Have, they worked yeah. like slaves. And then they had to fund their own life and yeah. start from scratch. And, they, you know, they didn't speak English even. You know, there was no language classes, welcoming committees, four-star hotels. You know, I know some people who learn direct provision. Some of them even have citizenship. Oh, yeah. But they're stuck in direct provision because they can't leave. They can't afford the accommodation. And all of that is going to be off the middle class. And that's what people need to realize. The globalists want to collapse the middle class by constantly funneling in more and more migrants. And Simon Coveney has changed the building regulations. He's trying to change the building regulations to add extra floors on the buildings, two or three floors to make them higher, to stuff all the migrants in them. And this is eventually... At Point, which they know in a decade or so the middle class will literally collapse and that's why they want to bring in their low wage federation yeah I actually because it will collapse. Gonna collapse that's what happened in Russia there is no middle class in Russia there's only the wealthy the very small elite and then the everyone else you know and that's what they want for Europe yeah I actually even think they just want to like I was even talking to somebody who worked for a Tesla um and he said, he, while he was working for it, um, and he said he was ashamed to, to say this, but they used to go after working class people. And he said, for no reason, maybe they didn't pay their parking fine, would be bullshit reasons why Tusla was taking children off, mainly working class people, he said. And he said, you know, that there'd be more checkpoints into a poor working class area. And that is because they know that, um, say, they, they were going to pay their taxes at the end of the month. So they would have them on the pole just to keep them down. And he said, look, the amount of children that were taken off for absolutely no reasons at all. And he told me where, where they get put, these children. It's absolutely, it's more than that. It's not just the middle class, the working class. They're attacking the Irish people. They are literally trying to rid. They are trying to rid Ireland of the Irish people. That's exactly. They know that if they can subvert, and uh, the abortion is absolutely nothing to do with women's rights. It's to do with bringing down the numbers, making it you know sexual, uh, sexual you know, having two or three abortions no big deal, and literally bringing down the birth rate. And we have to add immigration into that because all of our nurses and our teachers who are abroad who should be here having their children here are flying in for Christmas and flying back to Canada and everywhere, you know? They want to squeeze... I mean, Ireland has a healthy, in terms of fairly healthy, it could be better, but... uh, I know, it was the highest birth rate in Europe at one stage. But they're going to make sure that that's diminished. Yes, completely. That's the reason why. I can't believe the amount of 
of lo- Looney Tunes in Ireland, like, I just, it's so bad. It's you see, that's from education. Unfortunately, until we get back our education or start hedge school, they have been from a young age, that generation, because I know I have children, um, no, I mean, the it's, class, it's really crass, you know, with their iPhones in Dublin Castle celebrating abortion. It's just, oh, I mean, but they don't they understand the they think party. It's they, freedom. They really have, that whole generation, their education has been stolen. They, they, they are the stolen generation of education because since they started school, the government, since Ireland said no to Lisbon, they went heavy, he- hard on education, that all their books are EU funded, are EU regulated. So, you know, it, it's been changed. Well, thank you very much. You're listening to The Bonnery Show on ITV.ie and ITV News Radio. We're back talking to Eileen again about just a quick catch up about what's going on and the mess. The shock, the latest shock for me was Leo um, yeah. after the horrible, disgusting, despicable eviction of old people from Roscommon and that he decides that he is going to curb social media, so-called hate speech. Absolutely. For me, that was... It's, it's like living in the twilight zone, isn't it? Hate speech. You mean free speech. Yeah. Free speech. That's what it is. If you don't like it, it's called hate speech. So he doesn't like it. So for him, it's hate speech. It's absolutely disgraceful on those old people thrown out. But yeah, no, I do believe we're in for big, big trouble. Um, I think you're right. Everybody should just enjoy their Christmas because, um, well, yeah. It, it, yeah, I think it, it's important to to enjoy, but I'm not sure I'll be able to focus on, on, on home alone or anything. I mean, I might relax for that one film, but the rest of the time I think I'm going to be focused on, on this because I have to... To start doing things, you know, to yeah, well, to wake other people up. It's really, and even one of the Frankfurt School, you know, on culture Marxism, one of the of the thirteen commandments is control and dumbing down of the media. Well, that's, they have done that you know? so well. So Dennis O'Brien um, has the media. I mean, when but if people want to want to look at Gran Torino, um, he's interviewing Ben Gilroy. That that was the the spokesperson for the Yellow Vest uh, at the Customs House last week. Oh, very good. He's very, um, very good, Ben. Well, he went to his home. It's on YouTube, Gran Torino. He went to his home and he interviewed him. And he spells out uh, what it was about and that the Irish people have to remember that in spite of the globalists trying to rip our constitution to shreds, that we are a sovereign people and that it could be challenged. You, uh, you know, the UN might impact. All of this can be challenged because our our ancestors did all the fighting already. Yeah. They've done all those wars and they wrote out a constitution that is literally, I mean they signed scene and uh, de- they delivered something really that protects us from this kind of um, We need to get them out. So okay. how to get, we need to get all the government out. Fianna Fáil, Sinn Féin, Fianna Gael, all of them out. Yeah, it's and we clear. need everybody awake to understand what's going on. But while we don't have a media, or like a main media, for them to even understand what's happening to them, like a few people have actually woken up. I was saying about Tufla even woke a few people up because a few working class people who had nothing to do with nothing didn't pay pay as I said car parking or their children missed too many days of school got their children taken off them or too many late. Now, there weren't any real reasons when he was in Tussla that he'd seen that children were being taken off them. Um, and if they were migrants or anyway, they weren't being yeah. taken off them. So they Even the new children's hospital, the new children's hospital was 300 mi- billion, I think, something ridiculous, doubled in, the, in budget. They, there was discussion about it being in private ownership. I mean, that's a complete joke. We pay for it and then it's taken over by some private... Owners, yeah, it is going like to be. The country right. is being chopped up and sold off. It's time to wake up. It's, it's almost nearly too late, but I think it is. Well, the only thing is to just fight now. Uh, 
then I do think it's to fight the government. But the, the Irish people need to, like the French, take to the street. But like the French, they're going to be locked up. Like the French have already locked up. The last I looked at was 4,500 people locked up for protesting. So, I mean, there'll be a lot of people locked up. Apparently, they have started, to in Portugal. started in Portugal today now. Well, it's good. People are waking up to to, to um, fighting back. I saw Belgium, um, the Prime Minister had to resign. I don't know whether he yeah. saw that because of the UN pact, which is good. But uh, let's hope that they can get that. Which? He signed it, yeah, and had to resign. So I don't know what they're going, going to do because at first they were saying bullshit, it wasn't legally binding and then suddenly it turned out and Angela Merkel admitted that it is legally binding. Yeah, she, they're, they're going to try and make it legally binding, legally binding, definitely. That's when you look at the news at night and you see Katrina Perry and, and Keelan Chanley and everything. I mean, they're, they're not telling you the real news. No, I don't even watch it anymore, to be honest with you. The only thing, I, I get a glimpse of it because it just makes me sick to the stomach. Um, I get very nervous with it, so I actually can't um, because um, it's so, so, like, it's so away from reality. They're trying to focus any crime or anything on an Irish person. They don't tell you about the massive amount of rape. They don't even cover that story where those two innocent girls were murdered and their heads chopped off. Oh my God, that was the worst ever. I, I'm, people who looked at that video were actually disturbed and I, I couldn't, I said I better not look. Cause they're, yeah, no, it, 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 I've seen some bad videos. They were raped first, by the way. They were raped first. And that girl in yeah. the taxi, who apparently was in a taxi, the one who was raped after the Christmas party called Bridge. Yeah. They have a copy of it. They have a photo of the space, but I haven't seen it on the news either. It's just gone off. I've seen it on um, uh, in social media. He's a Pakistani. Yeah, he looks like it, yeah. But she was, like, it's been nearly two hours. It's, it's, this is the people they're bringing in, but they're doing it on purpose to kill us. They know perfectly their mindset that these people come from and yeah. the world and their thoughts. They know perfectly well... That, that what happened to those two girls in Morocco is coming here and they are going to make sure because we will be so terrified. Like, we're not even going to be able to leave our houses. Our children yeah, won't be. This is part of the one world religion thing. They need to eliminate the Christians. Mm. Well, the Pope is part I, of that I, I, as well. The Pope, the Pope is definitely, he's not a Pope. No, he's, he's not, not in my opinion. Because he's trying to get the whole, uh, the whole one, yeah, one, he's trying to get Islam and Christians together. Christlam, Christlam, can you second believe? Christlam. Absolutely disgusting. Um, it won't be anything. It will be Luciferian. That's what people yeah. need to realise. Oh, they yeah, so he said some disgusting Lucifer. comment, actually. I was interviewing somebody. Uh, it was actually my Iranian guy, Elvis. I, I don't know if you've heard my interviews with him. He's a fantastic man. He's very, very knowledgeable. But he was saying that, yeah, he admitted that it was something to do with um, Satan, the Pope says. Yeah, no, the Pope. Yeah, it's definitely in control of Satanism. Yeah. Because that's what I was like saying, like, I the I stopped believing in that Pope. Not that I was ever really a big fan of that uh, Pope. So anyway. And that was done through Freemasonry. Yeah. And the Vatican Bank, the ownership of the Vatican Bank. And Padre Pio spent a lot of his time trying to fight that infiltration. It, it, it's an awful, awful mess. But I think we are, we should all enjoy I will talk to you tomorrow, and I think we should enjoy our Christmas, because I don't know where this is going on. So unless the people take up, there will be streets covered in blood or else they will become slaves. There is only two options at this stage. Or starve. Or starve. Starve like the famine. But that will be a, a gradual thing. There will either be the, the uh, Irish will wake up, which they seem very sleepy, but they are waking, and the streets will be full of blood, because what they forget and what they don't realise is the Irish government doesn't give a damn. He will. They'll be quite happy to absolutely mow down and get them all killed. They don't care. There is. This is a lawless society 
with no government for the Along with my Freemasons. Yeah, and they're quite happy. Well, if the Irish don't wake up, they will become slaves. They will not be able to leave their houses because Islamics will be running this country within less than a year. And absolutely... Well, they'll only use Islam to get, you know, to wipe out the Christians. They couldn't give a damn about Islam. Oh, yeah. Islam oh. The Muslims will then have to obey the Luciferian cult. Yeah. When they... When they well, it's only too far from Islam, so I don't think that would be a problem to them. But for the moment, they'll just for women and children, it'll be very, very, very dangerous place. It will be, and for men, it'll just be particularly for women and children. That there'll be no place to live. It, it will not be a place where you can survive, like as it is, you know, in Wicklow, where they put the refugees in. People were like saying, "We won't be able to bring our daughters." won't be able to go to the disco, which was across the way. Well, they were calling them racists, but, I mean, there's a whole list of, in diversity crimes, IRA, you can look at all the rapes happening all over the country that are not reported. What's it called again, IRA? It's it's on Twitter, diversity crimes, IRA, E-I-R-E, you just look at that and you have, it's a whole Twitter account dedicated to the actual crimes that are happening all over the country. Jesus crimes, uh, rapes and all that, but they're not reported in the media. But they will report the rapists who are Irish, of course. Yeah. They're not reporting the, the girl who was raped, you know, the guy who's going around was raped for two hours. Oh, this is the kind of thing to see how far they can get, how many girls, because I think the Irish were sold on this diversity thing, don't ask me how they got sold on this. But they, well, they were told, we went abroad, so now it's our turn. But it's, it's, it's diversity for white countries only, for Christian yeah. countries only. That's for people. There's no talk of diversity in India, or China, or Kenya, or anywhere else. And they're killing the whites in South Africa. No one's none of that on the side. They're not even denying it now. They're going, taking them out of their houses. They're like not like they're not able to work. And oh, it's horrible what's happening to white South Africans. They oh. push and push, but that is coming here. If it's not, it's already here. But when we sign that UN agreement, that is us. We are the next South Africa. We're the test for Europe because we're a small enough population to actually create a genocide yeah. on. They're the same people who are behind the famine are the same ones today now using immigration to wipe out the Irish people. And literally there's a link between them in 1845 when they confiscated the food and today through the banks. They're the same ancestors. They haven't given up. They no. haven't given up. People need to wake up. We're not safe. We're not secure. You know, uh, finally have our own country. No, no, no. They haven't given up. But this time they're doing it through subversion, quietly, by yeah. stealth. And it's like they want us to wake up one day and look around and say, oh, this, actually, we're not in Ireland anymore. Yeah. In the meantime, they want us to be asleep. Well, we've already woken them up. Why to it's time they're not in Ireland. I go, every time I go into Dublin, I realise I'm not in Ireland. I don't know where well, I am. Well, it's yeah, that's that's the same. Thing. There's nobody Irish there. There is nobody Irish. I don't know. Even from last year, it's even got worse. The last, like last time I was in Ireland with you in town, um, and we were walking around, and it, there was no Irish there. We were going into bars, but even worse. We year. were in the minority definitely not my We are even from last year, the year on, so much more damage has been done. There is no well, Irish. Today he's, he's he's extending the reunification. Who are these people? Colette Kelleher and everything and in the, the sh- uh, Shannon. It's beyond belief. It's after all the blood all being corrupt. Every single thing. And that uh, you know, that those greens that the um, Air exit demonstration to peaceful demonstration. They were on the other side of Richard Boyd's Irish yeah. with United Against Racism, and I thought they were a Soros NGO, you know. And now I realise they are being paid by Soros, Sinn Fein, and people before probably. They're a branch of Labour from the UK. That's yeah, what I've learned. So they're, they're literally trying to take Ireland over. The UK parties have infiltrated into Ireland now. What people before profit are to do with? The no, people. No, the United Against Racism. Yeah, they had a big a banner, you know, on the Greens. 
Okay. Where, you know, Catherine, what's her name, from the Greens? McKenna or Catherine? Kenny or Catherine? She's from the Greens, anyway. She was out there, and um, they had a big poster, United Against Racism, and they were shouting, racist scum, racist scum. Well, for a street, they always say to scream that. Oh, yeah, I've never noticed that before. They do have English, the accents. And it's like but, a- I've realised now, this week, see how the way I'm, it's unreal. Yeah. I thought they were, fa- I knew they were definitely subversive, but yeah, I thought I they were related to the no. uh, But no, it's a branch of the UK Labour Party what? that are here. So they're trying to infiltrate Ireland now. Anyone because they've objects to open the UK. borders, literally open borders for a little country like Ireland. They just want us to fling open the borders and let everyone pour in from everywhere. To get rid of our race. And 164 nations have signed that UN Migration Pact, which means any one of those uh, countries, anyone from anywhere, can just fly into Dublin and set up a whim, set up their life in Ireland. And the, the, mostly the middle class will have to pay for it. Yeah. And if you object to it, it will be, you'll be criminal, criminalized. Or maybe well, fine. Then- the working class are getting their kids taken off them. I mean, pretty much getting their houses taken off them. I mean, left to live in the streets. Middle class are being pushed and pushed and pushed into the working class, and then they go down the same line. But they want, they've done it in America. They've destroyed the middle class. Yeah, they've done it. not just destroying the middle class here. It's definitely the working class as well. As I said, their, their kids are being taken off them, and their, their homes are being taken off them as well. And apparently those, um, all those, bankruptcies in the country there's 40 or 50 like there's a lot more that you know are not publicized it was 40 or 50 like a of those in that area not common alone yeah they want to which in is quite, county, you know which was quite weird actually because the the northern irish they want the land they want the land they want to own everything right they want to own everything and they would already own our water, and our water would be on its way to be privatized if people have not stood up to that. Yeah, thankfully they stood up for that, but they're going to get that water soon. They will go back and get it. Well, they won't get it if people... People need to unite. They won't yes. get it unless it's the problem. People want somebody. Even if they unite, the main problem is, I mean, they want a bloodbath. They want to have they do. excuse they to do. wipe out and turn them out. And they want us to unite. They want us on the streets, so they have an excuse to absolutely wipe us out. They've been trying to do it with um, chemicals over our air by poisoning water. That's why there's so many people with cancer in this country. They've been poisoning our our water, our air. They've been trying to just get rid of us. Now this well, is their slow excuse. Care, yeah. yeah, slowly. Sorry, slow death. Now all they need to do is crush the banks and everyone's starving. Yeah. And they've destroyed our water, so we can't even live off the fish. There was a major, major toll that's been brought into our fish. So they couldn't even survive now. Local fishermen can't get in, into the waters. The Irish wouldn't be able to survive where our fish was before before the easy. It was so plentiful. It was a fantastic, like, the whole island and more. We could have fed the whole of Europe um, with our fish. But, 12 miles, yeah, we have. But it's been destroyed now, and they will never recruit to the numbers. Well, you see, Ireland needs to be independent economically, like food-wise and everything, and energy-wise. If we could just get that, uh, that on, you know. The big problem was our way. money. We shouldn't have never given up our money. We wouldn't be dependent on importing all the time. <sighs> it's, a, it's a mess, but it's going to be a bloodbath because it will be a quick wipe out of trying to get rid of them. Other than that, they're slaves. I think, like Ben Gilroy said, I think the Irish people are slow to get angry because they're generally kind, you know. Yeah. And then it takes them a long time to heat up, but when they heat up, they can't, you know, they go mad. And that's what I'm hoping. I hope the fire is lit now. It's starting yeah. to light up. Absolutely. I'm hearing from people that people are starting to talk a lot now more about immigration and everything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I know even, like, a few of my friends, 
people I know who would be leftists who would absolutely have oh, left point. Left in mind. Yeah. I know completely. But even them are turning on each other because, you know, there are some of them kind of, you know, turning when it came to the rock common. People who are a belief in abortion, belief in immigration, belief in everything. But the rock common has again woken them up. So bit by bit, it's waking people up in different things. So a lot of people who would have, wouldn't it naturally be patriotic, but maybe because these people were old, are reaching out going, what the hell is going on? Why could that be the brutality of it too? But it just doesn't make sense that you could be pro-immigration because, and, you know, what is the difference? Between plantation, British plantation. Absolutely. There's no difference. But, you see, I think it takes them something like a Are they seed to wake up. No, it's a seed. They, they've been fed a lot of bullshit, so they believe it. So this, but, I do think each step is waking different people up. Like for me, as I said, it was Islam. For you, it was the banks. For other people, it was the abortion. For other people now, it's this eviction. But at least there's one good thing. There's more and more people waking up, and once you get one connect, the rest of the stuff start connecting and going, what? What's going on in Tusla? What's going on over here? What, why is all, yeah. Where is this going to? So once you click onto a dot, it doesn't really matter which dot that you hit, you start seeing that there is a much, much bigger picture. And that's where you go, wow. And I do think people are, so the eviction is waking up people that weren't woken up in a, the abortion. And the abortion woke up a lot of people. It was rigged. Absolutely. So obvious. Even the people who voted yes no, it was rigged. They just yes. oh, yeah, they even keep people, going on about 66% my ass. It was not 66%. No. And even the people who said they voted yes are right now saying we did not vote for this bill. We voted for it to be amended, but not this bill. So even those who actually voted yes are waking up, kind of going, "Where well, again, we put our trust in you that it was whatever the media said it was, it would only be 12 weeks, it would only be this for this and that, and you wouldn't be killing all Down syndrome children and all that sort of stuff. They're even waking up. It was only the hardcore repeal of the black jumper. Oh, God, it's around. Well, people can look up a um, few things they can look up. Um, which banks are not owned, which central banks are not owned by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. They can look it up on Google. They get the full list. They can look up America on YouTube. America, freedom to fascism. That would explain a lot, an awful lot. Um, they can look up elite. Uh, Globalelite.org. Yeah, they can. There's a lot of people. The good can thing do. is, the majority of people search. listening to this are already waking. They just need to pass it on to other people who are asleep. To even the, the, yeah. the things that you've mentioned there, even if they don't agree with anything you say or believe, even if they listen or they look up one of those things, there will be a dot somewhere that will click and they'll go, okay, that doesn't make sense. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. I'm telling you, even people like, like you know, as I said, my own brother, it was hard to get through to him, but he's coming around. Yes. Oh, absolutely. No, as I said, most of my friends were, a lot of my friends were leftists because I'm in that generation where a lot of them are leftists. Um, and that, um, like, some of them have turned around and kind of gone, oh, yeah, like, literally, they're fighting within each other, which is good. And because the millennials are, which is us, the generation after us, Generation Z, which is my son's group, they're completely different. Um, but it'll be too late for them. We'll have destroyed, the millennials will have destroyed the the country by then, by their stupidity. Oh, they're pretty bad. Yeah. Oh, they're, pretty, they're pretty brainwashed. And they really are very much. But, you know, even I was talking to one, and she's a very strong millennium. She was for abortion. She didn't really agree with it up to birth, but, you know, it's not her choice. Oh, she said, oh, God, yeah. She said, I don't really, don't really agree with it, but um, it's someone else's choice. That's what she said. Um, she's all for, um, um, she's all for open borders. So what? Like, what's the difference? Why should we have no, that? doesn't make any sense. Oh, no. And then the latest right. one, like she ends up arguing with another leftist because he's kind of going, you know what, that man, that was his house. 
and then he was Irish. He was right to that house. She was like, oh, well, he didn't pay his bills, did he? Like, and I think actually old people should be taken out of their home um, and given to younger people. I'm like, what, younger and non-Irish? Oh, yeah. Those are people in the families that need it. And where would you put these older people? Oh, maybe there could be like an old folks area built. What are you oh, talking about? Very, nah. God. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I do a half an hour with her. I change her home. No, you, you wouldn't. She's such a leftist in her, her belief. She's completely... Well, if she show, if I showed her the money, if I showed her the actual proof. Yeah. She, she'd be a total pawn. She's a total pawn. They have a completely brainwashed. But even when I was talking to her about this, she's like, oh, well, well that's just... her culture. Like, she, she just... She's so she left as well. And I was like, well, what if your child gets raped by them? What if your child... She's like, well, you could get raped by somebody else. But this is their culture. This is whatever. She still won't back down. She still goes, well, you know, well, they'll, she believes that they will some way become Irish. Yeah, it's like, it's like the, it's like the, the Danish NGO who was all, this, this, like, she was like that, and then she went to the Congo and got the head. Yes. Yeah. It's insane. There's two, that's the problem. There's a lot of those who believe so much. Even culturally, even if you leave all the crime and the way that's not important anyway, it's what people um, just culturally, it means that you would just be allowing constant extreme of Islam and all the other religions to come apart. They're not doing that. They're, they're not doing that. Not, only one direction is coming. And then you have mosques all over Ireland and these towns and these cultural towns. Next thing, the, the churches are... Um, you know, if the numbers go up, the churches would probably be They want it. Like they over. want right. people really unhappy. Um, they have to do with it. I, I, it's like they're pushing them so far. They want them to rebel. And it's like seeing how far they can push them. Now, there will be more evictions. In this year coming, there will be more evictions than there was in the famine uh, that, during the land league in Ireland. Probably well, already because done. Alan Shatter, our good buddy, Alan Shatter drafted that legislation. Yeah, and who signed for, Michael for D. Higgins? For his buddies, for his Freemason buddies, he drafted that legislation and he got it signed. Michael Hig- D. Higgins right. signed it, of course, like giving them the, the legal rights. He the absolutely people. hates Christmas. Every Christmas, he does something weird. They hate Christians. They hate Christians. This is what we have to realize. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the, yeah. it's the hidden truth. It took me a while to put my finger on it, but it's the truth. Yeah. We are blocking the way to their new, to their Messiah. And they've been waiting for, for God knows, you know, for five years to, They want Christ out of the way, and they want Christians out of the way. It's insane. Very scary time. And they want to centralize. I don't, and I hope there is a war. And not that that's the thing to hope for. Otherwise, you see a world of slaves. There is only two options. That the world goes. Well, uh, uh, and if there is a war, which I feel they're trying to design, they're trying to day by day. Bring it on, yeah. So closer and closer. If there is a World War Three, because Albert Pike, who's head Freemason, if yeah. you look up Albert Pike, he was commissioned by the Rothschilds, who are the owners of the central bank um, in Ireland and uh, all over the world. They're trillionaires. And he commissioned Albert Pike to draw up a plan for three world wars. So if you look up on Google... Um, Albert Pike, Three World Wars, and they will see what the plan is because they're following the plan. Absolutely. But listen, I will give you a shout tomorrow, um, Eileen. Thank you very much. Um, and we will talk tomorrow about what's going on. We'll have another quick talk. Thank you so much for your okay. time on the Bonnery Show. Talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much for your information.
You are listening to Irish News Radio at irishnews.net. Email news at irishnews.net.